Welcome back to another episode of Titans of Now. Titans reaches a wide audience of ServiceNow admins, developers, architects, and product owners. So if you want your brand in front of this audience, check out the description below for how to contact me about sponsorship opportunities. If you want to know what I'm up to lately, I invite you to discover Vivid Charts. Vivid Charts is a visualization and storytelling platform built on ServiceNow. Stop exporting data off platform to get the aesthetic control and storytelling experiences that you want. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Titans of Now. Folks, today I've got a Titan amongst the Titans. He is an Apex ServiceNow developer and a massive source of deep dive development education within the community. He is the author of The Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow and has a YouTube channel named after him. Ladies and gentlemen, you're on The Witch Doctor, one fist. Thank you very much, Robert, for those kind words. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, and yeah. Uh, the honor is mine, my friend. We always start at the start. Tell us how you got your start with ServiceNow. So let's see, where did it start? I, I, I'm not the normal developer, or maybe I am, because I don't have a degree in development or, or JavaScript or anything like that. And perhaps most of the people in service now, administration doesn't have it. But I mean, I started at nine with my nice Commodore 64 and those classic types and trying to, to hack those games with some basic. And I guess that was my developer started. But besides that, I guess the closest education I have is being a three-year education of a technical project manager to build like Metropolitan and the area network. But then again, when I graduated, the dot-com bubble burst and I started to sell Kirby vacuum cleaners instead of doing IT stuff. So that kind of twisted around, but I got lucky. I won actually $10,000 on a lottery. So I quit that job and started at the service desk a couple of months later on. Been around most of the roles, being the, the tech guy, the sysadmin, manager, a lot of ITIL process and incident manager and all that stuff. But like you say, the, the love story, I think it started in 2014 when we had in that time CA, which was a, a beast with a lot of stuff. And we were looking around, we're going to re renew the license and so on. And I barely grasped ServiceNow, to be honest. We looked at a couple of other systems and my boss came and said like, hey, take a look at this ServiceNow application. I have no clue what it was but sure we asked him come and the sales guy that was pure energy to be, to be honest he had his long sleeved shirt and the first thing he did he came in and he rolled up the sleeves and then he started to talk about service now and he captured all of us i mean for me it was the easy peasy stuff instead of having our consultant coming around for a couple of hours to fix a form he just click 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 and it was done so i mean then we said hey we want this one there were no competition at all so it was insane. And it was a, a standard ITSM installation, I guess. I think we were kind of special that way. We didn't really want to have like the consultants coming in, doing the implementation and then leave us and we have no clue how to do it. So we were a team of, I think we were like four or five people. So we took the system admin course and stuff like that right at the start. And then pretty much these specialists, they instead held our hands and told us how to do stuff. But mm. we actually did the work ourselves which was in our eyes a really good way to start learning what you can do and how you can do it and then again when the implementation were done we were not left there and had no clue how to do it because i mean we know what we say about service now i mean good thing you can do everything bad thing you can do everything <laughs> it's amazing and it speaks to how complicated things were in that era that you could take a team and ask a few intelligent questions of an external party and then essentially deploy it yourself faster, easier, less costly than if you had brought in third-party vendors. I remember in our, in our own case, we had just deployed HP Service Desk and it was just this horrific experience. And when we brought ServiceNow in, the purchase cycle and the deployment together was less time than the workshop phase <laughs> than we spent on HP. And it was just, yeah. I mean, it's a more complicated tool now that they're putting in yeah. like the virtual agent stuff and the, the service portal. Yeah. And there's just a little bit more Devi bits that are more complex, but yeah. man, what a, yeah. like you had to be there, right? <laughs> you had to be there yeah, to fully yeah, appreciate exactly. the scale. Yeah, and understand the difference between sitting with those giants that's been around for ages and the foundation were that, and then here comes service now, our base and all that and it's like, oh yeah you didn't even think it was true <laughs> Yeah, what do you mean we don't need a server? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. What, well, can I only click here and do that and it's done? 
Oh. <laughs> or just, oh, do you want a demo? Like, okay, yeah. well, how many weeks do I have to wait for the CD to be mailed to me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> CD? What are you talking yeah. about, man? It, it's insane. I mean, and I, I have to mention, I mean, just when we started as well, I mean, the community as well, that was a really, what you call, a turnover for me. I mean, the experience I had, I asked questions, how can we solve this? And no one replied at all. I mean, you not even almost the consultants. They, everyone wanted to keep their solutions and how they did by themselves. And then you enter this community and everyone helped out. Oh, yeah. Everyone shared. I mean, it was just like, what? How long ago did you come on? Did you have the ServiceNow community there? Like the new one that's run by Dan Brunn and his team? Oh, I don't remember. To be honest. I mean, I, I started out in 2014. Okay. So I, I think Dan and the guys were around, but it was still very small. And I mean, it's not like now when you go to the community and look at new questions and 10 seconds later, that page is gone with new mm. set of questions again. So I mean, no, hold on. Yeah, we have an old community, right? We did that moving, what was it called? It was a third party community we had, right? And then when ServiceNow released their community, we went right. over to that one. Yeah, fast. what a brilliant so, move that was. What a yeah. brilliant move. I'm really yeah. proud of them for that. And beyond just the community, capital T, capital C, the actual website yeah. you can go to, don't you find the ServiceNow community, small c in general, there's so many places you can go to get the knowledge. And you yourself have been a yeah. massive contribution to that with your videos yeah. and your Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how you manifested that book. I mean, basically, it all started with the community, to be honest. I mean, I, I started there and I had a lot of friends that were like MVPs in Microsoft and stuff like that. And I saw how they helped out and I really liked that kind of mentality. So when I started looking at the community and just like everyone else, you have no clue, you just read a question. But from that moment, like in 2018, I started to write down stuff that I found. I might not feel like I need it right now, but ah, good to have. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the book, that book was actually the data of, I don't know, not all of it, but of the things that I have gathered over the years that I like decided like, okay, I got a lot of stuff and I really want to share it because I mean, I saw the questions popping up on the community and all that. And it felt like, how can I share that amount of knowledge to people the easiest way? And my wife always says that I, I, I show that nothing is impossible when I decide to do something, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it felt something like that. I decided like, hey, I, I want to write a book. Let's try that and see how that was. And I have talked a lot with the uh, team Woodruff to help me out. Like how, how hard is it really? Is it, is it worth the, the tears and sweats? And uh, it's amazing how easy you can do it on your own. Going through like Fiverr to get some good images for the books and stuff. Yeah. And Kindle have all those, how you can write it in docs and just translate it over to Amazon and all that stuff. So, I mean. So you did it completely? Yeah self publish yeah awesome good for you man yeah and that, that, that's thanks I, I need to reach out and say hey, i told him before but that's thanks to tim who said that hey dude it's so simple just do like this and i like wow yep tim's another uh, titans alumnus yeah yeah I, I, really and good. i consider your book and his kind of like the seminal works of the service now ecosystem everybody should have those on their bookshelf for sure oh, oh thanks Writing a book on top of a day job is no small feat. And I wonder if you have any stories where you felt like your back was just completely against the wall. You weren't sure if you had what it takes to, to make it, to go to overcome this challenge. Can you tell us about a time where you really struggled in the ServiceNow space? Oh, yeah. I guess there is a lot of times. One of the biggest, I guess, was when I still was a customer. We were a customer for like one, one and a half year. And we were doing, we were having like everyone else, the, the CMS homepage and all that, the Yelly Fun stuff. Mm. And I knew that, I think it was, I mean, the service portal came in Helsinki, but I think it actually was supposed to come in Geneva, but was postponed one release by some reason. And we were starting to build something like a, what's it called, like a service page or something where you can see how the services are up and running or not. Yeah. Uh, and I like, okay, if Helsinki and Service Portal or Geneva in that case is coming and we heard all of this about AngularJS and all the, the wows that were in those years, then I decided to say, hey, let's... I'm going to make this in CMS, but with Angular instead. And to go back when I said I was not a developer, so yeah, my front end skills, they were kind of zero, I guess. I never built a homepage and mm -hmm. CSS and what's that. So when I 
said to my managers and all those, hey, let's do this, I can do it. And then after a couple of weeks, I really felt that I have taken it over my head. But yeah, a lot of courses and books on Angular and, and we made it. But that was one of those times that I felt like, okay, perhaps I shouldn't be so positive and think <laughs> that, hey, how hard can it be? <laughs> it can be pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. So th that's one of them, I guess. What about something where, you, besides the books, we already mentioned that, something that you're most proud of, your accomplishments in the ServiceNow space? There's probably got to be a lot to pick from, but... Yeah, it's hard to say. I guess I'm most proud of, of being an MVP and being selected to that because it means so much to me that having that title and a lot of responsibility as well. But I mean, in my case, that means that people are really happy and appreciate what I'm spending my time on and helping people do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we talk, well, it's not like something you build, but it's just, I don't know, I like helping people. And I mean, getting that kind of gratitude really shows people appreciate what you're doing. And that that's means, means the world to me. I got to say, ServiceNow really goes the extra mile to showcase their, their MVPs, wouldn't you say? Yeah, totally agree. I, mean, I, don't, I don't remember even, like I worked in a couple of predecessors to ServiceNow. And I look at some of the competing communities and I just don't see the equivalent action going on. But then when you get received into the MVP program, you get the nice little swag and whatever, but also yeah, yeah. that knowledge they have those huge dinners and, you know, yeah. they're always giving us previews to new releases and stuff. And I feel like I, I certainly wouldn't be where I am today without the community, but even the MVP community has been a real like staple of my growth. I mean, just like saying, it really feels as well that they are listening thing to you, what you're saying and yep. they do that even if you're not an MVP but I mean as the MVP actually it does help I mean of course it does yeah I think that's the whole how the ServiceNow company works I remember when I was a customer I might be over to the consultant side but I even emailed Farrell who was VP of one of the areas and she responded back to me like within a day and I never supposed to think I would get an answer right but I think that's the whole foundation of ServiceNow I mean you can ask almost anyone I mean of course they have a lot to do but they are so helpful and that goes over to community as well and that, I think that is what why they understand how important the community is for service now as a product as well to yeah. involve. They're, they're a listening company, right? It's, yeah. And actually, you know, Farrell Hoff, you mentioned her. I had a similar experience. I went down to California to sit in their first store user group. And I got this email while I was in the session. And she's like, I heard you're in California. I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, I want, <laughs> I want to meet and pick your brain on stuff. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What? Yeah. You want to pick my brain? Yeah. It's like the heavens open up and God's like, hey, hey, come here for a minute. I want to talk to you about yeah. something. <laughs> With me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, really, it's, it's really cool and you feel appreciated. Yeah. That's, certainly, that's really important. That's certainly true. It, it's obvious from your YouTube channels and from your book that you have a wide, wide array of expertise on ServiceNow. But what aspects of the tool do you feel like you most resonate with? Oh, that, that's that's a good question. I feel like one of the persons that knows a little bit about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if I look at what I've done the last, well, since I joined ServiceNow, to be honest, I'm basically just into the scope app sphere mm -hmm. and, and the platform side. I'm building a lot of integration. So I'm working a lot with Flow Designer Integration Hub and that stuff. And I mean, if you look at my time here, I'm basically, I would say like 50, 80% the normal administrator developer with a team, uh, helping out the team, handling the, the training instance, which pretty much handles the whole process of booking the, the training courses and all that logistic behind it. I guess that is where I will glow, I guess. I mean, sure, I've been in the ITSM and CSM sphere as well. But don't tell me to do an ITS I mean, implementation or CSM because, yeah, I need to read up on that one in that case. Well, I, I can't believe we got this far in and you're that level of developer and you do custom development day to day. And I haven't asked you, what's the coolest thing you've built on the platform? Oh, what's the coolest thing? I, I don't know if I build cool things. Ah, good question. I, I honestly can't say, I mean, for me, if you look, I think the coolest thing I built that I thought was the coolest thing. That was pretty much that Angular uh, page, which I did for like four years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other stuff, sure, you might 
feel it's cool. I mean, I heard some of other titles would be like Spotify integrations and all that stuff. Sure, I've built a lot of integrations, but and they might be cool if you look under the hood. But I mean, it's not like Chuck's karaoke or, or something like that. <laughs> and, and and I guess that is because my imagination sucks, to be honest, when it comes to ideas. I know I went to, I think I was in one hackathon or something for a couple of years ago, and I have no clue what to do when I just ended up with someone else asking me to join. And that's me. I mean, I had to break it down, but I don't build so many cool stuff in my eyes. I don't know, to be honest. That's, that's a weird question. I should have a good answer, I guess. <laughs> Is it that Swedish humility we hear all about? Yeah, I, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't, yeah, probably. I, I hope I've done some good stuff. But in my eyes, Cools is something. I'm, I mean, I've done, oh, what's his name who did the uh, Amazon button uh, clicky Matt Saxon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he did that, and then Chuck did his videos, and then I did it for myself. I, mm-hmm. I bought one of the buttons and tried to switch it. But I mean, that's not my cool stuff. I mean, that's someone else's cool stuff. <laughs> I, I normally just take other pieces and just tweak them a little bit to get them to work like I want uh, and so on. But I can't say I have a cool stuff that I come up with from the start. Hmm. I, I won't take that credit from someone else, to be honest. We're going to have to ask somebody else who works with you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. So I rarely get the chance to interview somebody on the inside, and I'll understand if you can't give a lot of detail here, but is there anything coming down the pipe that just gets you super excited? I know there are, there are basically two things. I know I just talked to you and mentioned about Flow Designer, but another thing actually popped up that actually gets me even more excited than Flow Designer stuff. And you have seen screenshots, you can tweak a little bit. I mean, the new UI, how you can actually build that with, kind of reminds you how you build stuff in, in, in Service Portal, right? With, with, with more like graphical way, but the, the seismic way uh, way of building stuff that is to not say too much i think that will rock the world i can't wait i i I literally can't wait like i've seen a few demos and all i can say is imagine a world where you don't have to live in a form list report dashboard paradigm right where those things are all separate things that you must you know what i mean like you have to go different places for it but it can it can just bring all that together like you could have a form that's got a list of other stuff on it yeah Exactly. And and, and, a, and a counter and a dashboard. And you can mix it all together. I cannot wait. Yeah, I mean, in, in my case, who's not a, a full-end developer as well, when it's not code, I'm happy to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> you know, don't make so many mistakes as well. So it's going to be really cool. All right, last question. There's a lot of people at the start of their ServiceNow career that listen to the Titans and Now podcast. I wonder if you could give any advice or insights looking back on your own experience that might help a ServiceNow beginner. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Normally, I would say that I started out in the community. I mean, we didn't have no learning and all stuff. And I, I started out looking at the questions, and in the start, you couldn't answer them, and reading and looking at the answers. And I actually went through one of the other videos, and I think it was, and I, I'm sorry, Drew, but I think I pronounced your, your name correctly, Mr. Maverick, the way he went, he went to look at the correct answers instead of the unsolved ones. That is a really good way to learn. And then I have to say now learning. Now learning and the developer side, they have so much courses and stuff to learn. The biggest issue I would have, and I guess everyone else who is new, is trying to like, where should I start? Mm-hmm. Should I go into ITSM? Should I go into Scope? There is so much things you can do in ServiceNow. It's easy that you don't even get through the starting line because you can't really decide which path should I start going down. That's and true. I'm... Yeah, that's super true. At least from my perspective, I think people try and compensate by going wide. Let's, let's just learn a ton yeah. of stuff. And yeah. I just, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. I can't go back and be new. <laughs> so it's hard to see yeah. with new eyes, but don't go wide for heaven's sake. You'll just, yeah. it's too late to know just a little about everything. Yeah, exactly. I tried to know everything about everything, but I mean, I let that go for a couple of years ago. I mean, so it's now grown so big, you can't know everything. And uh, uh, like, I and I am not the one that came up with this one as, as well, but I always try to be not the smartest gang in the room. That's the way how you learn stuff. Just make sure you're not that one. There you go, folks. Joran Lundquist himself said, even he can't learn everything. So for those of you who are struggling on what to do, don't let that get you anxious. It's okay. It's okay to not be able to go that wide. Totally okay. Totally agree. 
All right, Goran, thanks so much for being on the channel. It was so good to have you here. We are going to have links in the description for your book, The Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. We'll have links to your YouTube channel. And uh, any final words? No, I think that wraps it up pretty good. Thank you a lot for having me. Ron. Yeah, I really appreciate the time, Goran. Thank you. If you'd like to sponsor this channel's content, email me at the address pictured here. If you need a conversation on where your ServiceNow implementation is or where it's going, you can reach me on Super Peers and book a short consult. If you want to contribute to high quality, high frequency output, consider a donation. If not, I still appreciate your viewership. Consider hitting the like button and sharing within your network. Thanks for watching.